I think just like a, a bad year to look back at what may have gone wrong environmentally and from a management perspective, we can look at a good year and see well, what went right. You know, we had a lot of good yields. So what did we do that worked and did we maybe leave some pounds in the field and, and what can we do to address that, whether it be varieties, fertility practices, or, or pest management. So my top tips for helping growers maximize their performance this upcoming season, I think one would be starting clean. I'm going to harp on eliminating weed pressure in the season. It not only benefits us from an early season growth standpoint, but it puts us ahead of the game moving into the season and hopefully lets us control weeds a little bit more practically and manage them a little bit easier as the season goes on. So starting clean is a huge one. Variety selection, not just what performed well in variety trials, but what performs best field to field and not to be afraid of going to three, four, five different varieties. You can call it spreading the risk or spreading the wealth, whatever you want to call it, but making sure that we're selecting varieties that fit in our fields and variety selection is very important. And I think overall we have to look at what's our history with these varieties, what are we comfortable with, what did we see on our own farm, what did our neighbors see, and what does the data from the area tell us. And taking all that into account, and then what about those varieties, why are we selecting those, or do they fit where we want to put them? And do they offer something from a trait package side or from a disease or nematode tolerance side that can really address an issue that we have? After that, setting that variety up or setting cotton up to succeed is going to be key. So that's not only supplying it with what we need, so soil testing to get nutrient levels. What do we need to apply? How much do we need to apply? You know, figuring out what works and what doesn't in terms of sources and, and application methods uh, is going to be key to, to get that plant the best start it needs. Stay flexible. Be responsive to what you're seeing. If something is going on on a neighbor's farm or you, or you hear of something going on, take that into account and be mindful and, and that way maybe we can get ahead of the game instead of playing catch up after we have a problem that's already in the field. Planting date's one of those things that's definitely evolving as we move forward and a lot of that maybe has to do with the initial cost we have with cotton. It's becoming more expensive to grow it and when prices are where they are now it, it makes us a little bit more on edge that when we put that crop in the ground we want to make sure that we're putting it in, in the most successful point. So. Whereas in the past, we may have been looking at a range of dates, and those dates may have been more you know, rigid that when we get into within this two to three week period, we need to be planting our cotton. Uh, we may now be in a, in, a, in a stage where it's more of condition dependent. When we get these conditions, let's go in. Visit cropscience.bear.us and search cotton yields to learn more about how additional best management practices can help cotton growers secure the best yields and return on investment.